We begin a session today by leadership sharing the landmarks from Busan, South Korea, 10th Assembly of the World Council of Churches towards Karlsruhe, Germany, where the 11th Assembly of the World Council of Churches will be held. I would like to make a couple of comments in terms of what are some of the landmarks that we have seen along the way. My remarks will be threefold. First, a look at the movement, the ecumenical movement in terms of member churches and the wider ecumenical movement. Secondly, a look at the programmatic issues. And thirdly, a look at governance, all kinds of governance. Let's just cast our minds back and remember that we met in Busan, South Korea, a, a, a peninsula that is still divided. Korea was divided after the Second World War. We are moving to Germany, which was divided also, but thank God, and we celebrate the grace and the mercies of God that we now go back to Germany, a united country, a country that has really served, supported the ecumenical movement. This particular aspect, geographically, politically, economically, is critical because when we look at our theme, Christ's love, we are called to really rethink where the communities after many, many conflicts. In terms of the ecumenical movement, I like to say that the ecumenical movement, particularly the World Council of Churches and its member churches, what we've seen between Busan and we move to Karlsruhe is a widening and a broadening of ecumenical dialogue. We have deepened our bilateral dialogues, which are intercommunion, but we have also broadened the number of groups that we relate to. For instance, the Pentecostal movement, the evangelical movement, we see a much more positive spirit since Busan. Having said that, let me recollect that in Busan, we had a challenge where a group, a small group of evangelicals were still posing WCC as antichrist. In my memory, this has actually continued to decline as we have deepened our dialogue with a lot of other groups of Christians. And finally, on this particular broadening of dialogue, we have seen also a deepening and a much more content-rich interfaith dialogue. The motto of Busan captures what I have just described, and that is, we are committed to move together. We moved together as member churches. We have moved together with other communions that are not related, like the Catholic Church. But more important, we have moved together with the human communities, social movements, in addressing justice issues. Looking at the 
motto. We are committed to move together. We can actually go back to the issue of the pilgrimage of justice and peace. The pilgrimage of justice and peace has offered us a framework of relating. Busan invited men and women of goodwill, invited people of other faiths, invited Christians, member churches to journey together. And indeed, in the last eight years, the pilgrimage of justice and peace has offered a strategic approach in terms of facilitating the coherence and in ensuring that issues that are clearly human-based that affect the lives of people are brought together. Still reflecting on the pilgrimage of justice and peace, it is the same strategy that it has offered in formulating the objectives, the program objectives of the World Council of Churches. Programmatic objectives that are basically four, uh, if you want to put it five, and these have guided our work. Let me just lift up a couple of issues on programs that for me, from leadership perspective, do offer us some food for thought and continuity. One, we have seen since Busan a much, much uh, coherent, very active, very strong communication unit of the World Council of Churches, and particularly social media. We people are able to follow the work, not only of the World Council as an organization, but of all communities, member churches, non-member churches. And this is because the unit of communication never before has been as strong, as active, as agile. And indeed, it is through this communication that during this pandemic, we've been able to keep together, to work together, to pray together, and to work together. Because of an active and very creative communication department, we saw that during the pandemic, which almost paralyzed the work of the World Council of Churches and many other organizations. But alas, to our dismay, we were so happy that through this department, we were able to connect with member churches. We were able to harness stories of hope, stories of resilience, stories of patience, stories of innovation. And as we seek to meet now and move to the 11th assembly, I dare say that indeed the churches have proved their resilience. They have proved the need and the place for intergenerational support, dialogue, and fellowship because it was the young people who supported the clergy, the elderly in churches to cope with the new technology because technology has helped uh, keep fellowship and keep community. And therefore the place of technology during this period has been very, very critical. The place of technology with all its lopsidedness has helped to keep the fellowship alive, to keep 
the work of the council alive. Let me touch on the community, the just community of men and women. The just community of men and women for this period has lifted up the issue of Thursdays in black, fighting rape and violence, gender-based violence. Gender-based violence has been a global thing, but the World Council of Churches through the Thursdays in Black movement has been able to rob in other groups. For instance, the groups that started in America and other places that were secular, but working on the same issues of uh, overcoming gender-based violence. Uh, therefore, for me, a programmatic issue that stands also very close to having some major landmarks is the just community of men and women. It has proved that together, men and women, we can overcome the challenges the obstacles, the issues that generate unwanted and ugly violence. Uh, I then move on to the Mission and Evangelism Conference of 2018 held in Africa for the first time. For us as Africans, we were looking at moving from Ghana to Tanzania. And as we reflected on mission and evangelism and transformative discipleship, it was very, very important that the place of mission and evangelism in the life of the council, in the life of the movement remains a pillar because it is through evangelism, it is through mission that we are able to change the lives of people. By accepting Christ as the Lord and Savior of their lives, a new lifestyle, a new community is formed, a new value system is formed. And thus transformative discipleship becomes central, having addressed the issues before of mission from the margins. The other programmatic area that has uh, come up recently is overcoming racism, xenophobia. Because despite all the work that had been done in the past, the demons of racism, the demons of xenophobia, the demons of division, continue to dog humanity. And so we realized that there was a wave all over the world that had really woken up racism against certain communities, xenophobia, and so forth. And this is a program that the Central Committee endorsed, and I think it's an important program as we continue. Let me finally look at the issues of unity. Uh, a lot of publications have been made, and I think I will not really go into details, but for me, what is important is having linked faith and order work with the pilgrimage of justice and peace so that the theology that is now shared with us from the pilgrimage of justice and peace also is reflected in the work of unity, faith and order. To be more specific, I think it is important that PJP, 
that is pilgrimage of justice and peace, purposed, intentionally decided to reflect theologically. This has been a landmark. Let me finally, this is not exhaustive of all programs, and I think we cannot, but as I finish, mention the place of Bose in the formation of future ecumenists, future leaders. And even though we have had the pandemic, again, Bose has been able to function, has managed to bring in students gone all over to overcome the challenges. My final point is on governance, World Council of Churches governance. Beginning with the Central Committee, which now used to meet two years instead of 18 months, was of course impacted by the pandemic, but thank God, most people understood the need for us to continue our work online. And the last meetings of the Central Committee were quite productive online. Uh, we have taken decisions online. And for me, this points to us a very positive direction uh, we are going to meet again online, unfortunately, because we had anticipated in-person meeting. And I'm sure we will have a fruitful central committee. Our executive committee has done many of its meetings, if not, except for one online. Leadership has also done. Now, to conclude on governance, we have seen a spirit of coherence, teamwork, collegiality, support. I mean, personally, when it comes to the leadership of Central Committee, I can only but say it's been very collegial. It's been very consultative, very supportive of each other. And uh, together with the presiding bishop of the Church of Norway, who was then the General Secretary, and now with the Acting General Secretary, Father Sauka, I mean, we've worked very well. And I want to thank God and wish that the next leadership after Busan, after Karlsruhe, will have the same ambience, the same spirit, because I, as a moderator, have been greatly supported by my colleagues, without which it cannot be possible to function. So looking back to Busan, the theme for us now is so relevant because the pandemic is divided people. The pandemic has exacerbated some of the conflicts that were there. And hence the theme of Christ's love moves us to reconciliation and unity could not have been so relevant because to me, it is divine. It is timely and it sums up all our programs. Thank you so much. Let us meet in Carlsworth.